no worse shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. Welcome back, everybody. So today, it's another day. But today, it's a BMW kind of day. Because it turns out that our BMW is not too happy with us. Seems that all these banging red lines and driving the shit out of it has not always been the best thing for it. And now it looks like we're blowing a lot of white smoke. It was just smoking really, really bad. You can kind of see it. Let's see if we can. And it smells super sweet. So, and not sweet in a good way. It's looking like it's either a head gasket, a cracked head, or something along those lines. Uh, but just to verify, we're gonna do a compression test. So that's what's the goal for today. So basically what we need to do is we need to get in there. We're gonna take one of the spark plugs out. Now I'm reading misfires on two cylinders specifically. It's four and six. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check those first. I'm gonna pull four and then we're gonna compression test it and see what it says. If it's good, then maybe that's not the issue. But the fact that we're losing coolant, we're seeing the white smoke and it smells sweet. These are all things that tell me that it's probably a head gasket, which is common. I mean, it's 280,000 miles. We beat the shit out of it, but I don't know. So we're gonna check it out. So let's get started doing this compression test. So first things first, I had to get my little compression tester, which as you can see here, it's basically just this nice nifty little gauge thing. It's a, it's a compression tester. So we're just gonna take this, screw it in the, uh, spark plug hole thing, whatever you want to call it. And then we're just going to take that and put it in there. And then we'll see what we get. I know that's kind of simple, but it's what we're going to do. So don't forget to warm up the engine because that's going to give you a better reading when you do these compression tests. Whoa. But anyway, make sure it gets nice and warm because if it's not warm, uh, well, you're just not going to get as good of a reading or as accurate. Oh, there we go. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna take these covers off, get to the spark plugs. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do before you actually do your compression test, you gotta disable the spark in the fuel. So let me show you where we go to get the uh, spark plugs undone. So this little thing here is the spark, basically, for the uh, coils. This basically gives it the power. So we unhook that, and now our coils don't have any power, which is what we want, because we don't want these things sparking. Um, and then we're just gonna pull the ones that we think are the problems, which I believe is four and six, so four and six. But we're gonna check four because it's the easiest one to get to. Um, and we'll see what we find. So when you're looking at this, you got one through 10, and then you go all the way till you count to 18. This is the fuel pump fuse, we pull that. And then here's the fuel pump and DME, DME relays. So we're gonna pull both of these out. Ah, boom. Okay, well, those have seen better days. Look at that, that's all burnt up. That's interesting, so maybe there's a problem with this one. I might need to look at getting a new relay. Um, but anyway, we're gonna set these aside for now, uh, but don't lose them because we'll need them after we're done. So now we got the fuses pulled, the relays pulled. We got rid of the connection to the actual coils so we don't have any spark. So now we can look at pulling the coil and the plug. And I'm just gonna pull the spark plug. Oh Jesus, tighten that one a bit much. All right, got that sucker out of there. Holy crap, that has seen better days. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our compression tester, just thread it in there to where it's nice and tight. It's got a little O-ring on there to make sure that way it seals properly so we get a good reading. So let's go put this thing on there. So now you can see we got the little O-ring on there, so we're good, we're just gonna work this in the hole and just slowly tighten this sucker up. All right, we're on there. So now what I gotta do is I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna start the car, crank it over a few times, and we'll see what kind of results we get. Okay, so we're sitting at like 120, 130-ish, which is low. That's not good. That's, that's very not good. So we're gonna go check number six and see if it's a similar story. And if that's the case, then we'll just check them all and just see where they're at, um, but it doesn't leave me too hopeful. All right, let's go see what we get. So this one looks a lot better than the last one. We're looking at like 150, like just below. Uh, but that's still not good for compression for these engines. So, hmm. 
So I don't know exactly what this is gonna mean, but I'm pretty certain that it means that number four is probably our problem cylinder. I think it's weird that six is misfiring, but the fact that the compression was still fairly low compared to what you would expect. So like normally it would be like 12 bar or in PSI it'd be like 175 PSI, somewhere around there and up. Um, now mind you, this thing's got 280,000 miles, so of course it's gonna go down with life. So 150 kind of makes sense with it with this many miles, but 120, not so much. That's pretty bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue for every other cylinder and just see kind of what kind of readings we're getting and see if it's uniform or if number four is our problem cylinder. So I'm gonna go finish this up real quick. Okay, so now we're gonna do cylinder number five and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we got a similar reading as we did on number six. We're looking at like 140-ish. Yeah, it's like 140. So it's still pretty low compared to what we should be seeing, but it looks like as the cylinders go from here this way, the compression is getting lower. So I wonder if it's gonna be even lower here. So let's find out. All right, time to do number three. So it looks just like I suspected. It's getting lower the, fur the closer we get to the front of the engine. That's close to like 130, which is close to four, which you can see this one's about 130, that's about 130, this was 140, 150. So if we see 140 here, 150 here, I'm guessing it's a head gasket issue from this center moving out maybe, or it could be a valve, who knows? We'll see, let's get the other two. All right, time for spark plug number two. See what we get. So it's pretty much just like what I was expecting. This one again, it's down to about 140, kind of like uh, the one up there was. So it looks like what's happening is there's some sort of compression leak from the center because these are both at like 130-ish, 120, 130. And then you spread out, it's like 140. And then I bet you, see that one's 150. I bet this one's gonna be closer to 150, which makes me think that there's a problem with the head and it's probably warped in the center portion out and that might be our issue. But let's get this last one and see what, it, we'll see what it says. All right, so now we got the number one set up. See what we get. Okay, so I think it's safe to assume it's pretty accurate in my assumptions, but this one too also looks pretty low. We're looking at like 140. So it looks like we got 140, 140, 130, 120. 140 and like 145, 150, so not great. Okay guys, so I did a little bit of reading just to make sure that I'm accurate with my numbers because I don't want to tell you guys the wrong stuff. So the way that it works is there's a formula for figuring out the minimum, basically it's the minimum amount of PSI that you're allowed to have for compression for a BMW according to the Bentley manual, and it depends on your engine. So for like an M50, it would be 10 to 2 to 1, which would be like 12.2 times the atmospheric pressure, which is about 14.6. So you calculate that out, that's 149.9 for an M50. Um, if you're an M52, then it would be 10 to 5 to 1 compression times the 14.7, which gives you a minimum PSI of 154.4. Um, so what that means is that the minimum compression that you're supposed to have in your cylinders is 154.4. I didn't have over 150 in any of mine. Also, the variation on that, they say you can have a difference of about seven PSI per cylinder. Well, I had one that was like 120 something and then another one that was almost 150. So that's a huge variation. So that means that there's definitely something wrong with my compression. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I made that known so you know the correct way to figure out what your compression numbers are. That's basically just like a general rule, but that's from the Bentley manual. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully it makes sense. And hopefully, you know, hopefully you don't have the problem I'm having because now it looks like I need to get a new engine. RIP, baby. All right, now what? So here's the problem. We know that the compression isn't good. We know that this engine's on the way out, but the problem is I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. Like, do we just go ahead and do a head gasket? I don't think we do that right away. Or do we just send it until it blows, which that's 
highly possible. You know, I don't know exactly what I should do with this thing and I'm kind of curious because here's the thing, I've been looking into swaps. There's a couple swaps I have on the list as a possibility. Obviously LS just because it's easy, they're easy to come by and they're not too expensive for the engines. Um, but also in the future if they ever blow that it's real easy to replace so if we ever run into this situation We're not having to look all over for an engine now. We could also look at maybe an s52 swap So that just being the m3 engine and we put that in there. So that's a possibility. It's a pretty direct fit Another option would be 1jz 2jz. The only thing is might be a little bit more expensive But I mean it's a freaking 2j like that's not that's like bulletproof I don't know, I want to hear what you guys think. Any of you guys run 2Js, 1Js, LS? What do you guys like, what do you don't? It's meant to be a nice car. It's not going to be just a, a drift missile, kind of like the RX-7. It's not going to be our Pro-Am car, that's the RX-7. This is going to be our practice slash daily. Just out of curiosity, what you guys think, put it down in the comments, tell me what you want to see. Obviously, it's going to be a while, and if I do do the build, it's going to take me a while to do, just because I'm going to have to slowly piece it together. So, this thing might be out of commission, but uh, we'll see. We're going to drive it till it blows for now. And uh, if you guys like this video, just make sure to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. You know, it's down over in that corner over there. And I'll be sure to see y'all in the next one. So get ready. I'm so happy watching my mesmerized body cries. I'm so happy 